What's up, YouTube? It's me, KYP561, coming in here to talk to you all about last night's episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta. We are in season nine, and I think that this was episode six, and the title is Tastes Like Trouble. All right, um, I didn't even watch, I didn't get a chance to watch last night. I had a fun field weekend, okay? Um, I went to, um, the Funk Fest that they had here, um, it was in Miramar, but I guess it's called the Miami Funk Fest for whatever reason. But child, I had me a good old time, honey. It was um, H-Town, it was Trick Daddy, it was Guy, it was Jodeci, it was Drew Hill, SWB, Mystical, TLC. Although I didn't stay um, to see TLC because we actually got rained on on Saturday. That is one reason why I sound like a dude. But, however, I can say I sound ten times better than I did yesterday. Because <laughs> yesterday, honey, y'all would have swore it was a man up in here <laughs> somewhere. But, yeah, I had a really, really, really good time. I got a chance to hang out with some of my childhood friends or whatever. You know, we was out there. We was turned up. We was drunk. You know what I'm saying? We was having us a good time, honey. Yeah, it's raining all, goddammit. But, yeah, we had a good time. So, anyway, by the time I made it back home um, yesterday, I was like, fuck that. Because y'all know I have to be to work at 8 o'clock in the morning on Monday. So, I was like, mm -mm, honey, I'm just going to have to catch the housewives when I get off of work. And just go ahead and uh, get in here and get y'all this video real quick. So, let's go ahead and get into it. It's a lot of shit that went on, in my opinion. On this show but of course it's some key things that I do want to spend a little bit of time on so the other shit I'm gonna just go ahead and run through it real fast cuz it was neither here nor there they really could have just exit out all that shit and let's just got to the to the real meat and potatoes of the shit okay but anyway so we opens up um, with Phaedra getting off the elevator I guess to her um, where she works so she gets off the elevator job we just got some old randoms Standing out there, standing out there like they fucking paparazzi, child. It's just look like some motherfuckers they had, you know, they passed out some cameras to, you know how they do it, the first comes, first serves. And uh, we gonna act like, you know, we these reporters. I don't see nobody with no reporter badge. I don't see nobody with the camera and shit up here. You know how they normally have the news um, or whoever they work for on the side of the camera. I ain't seen none of that shit. This was some old homemade ass shit if I ain't never seen it before in my life. So, of course, she picks out the only known person within the group, which is that Freddie old guy, which everybody knows that he's the go-to for the Housewives franchise, or at least the Atlanta Housewives, or whatever the fuck goes on in Atlanta, Freddie O is the go-to person, or whatever. So, it ain't like, you know, she has some real deal motherfuckers out here that just really wanted to talk to her about this bomb scare shit, or whatever. So anyway, she gets in there with him and she tells him that this this person that supposedly um, threatens her with this with this bomb shit or whatever was somebody that she has known. I think she said for over 20 years. I guess she used to represent him back in the day or whatever. Somebody named Drama. For some reason, that song is really, um, I mean, that name is really ringing a bell in my mind. And I'm thinking that he may have been like maybe a one hit wonder um but it was like a popular song for a minute. I'm going to look that shit up when I get off here because it's, it's bothering me and I need to know who this person is. But anyway, Chai, um, I think that he had maybe had been arrested, like been, did some jail time or something like that. And I guess, you know, he was trying to get back on. I don't know, but from when they showed him from the previous time that he was on the show, I guess, he looked like a fucking crackhead to me. I mean, so I wouldn't be surprised if... Somebody thought this motherfucker was coming in there to do some shit to their ass because he don't look like, you know, your average, you know, black man, you know, whatever. Y'all know what I'm saying. So anyway, child, she claims that he went to the wrong law firm and told him that he was there to drop off some bomb music. Now, I don't know how the fuck you get I'm dropping off some bomb music and I'm finna blow this motherfucker up. I don't know how you get them too confused, but child, Phaedra, honey, whatever. Phaedra is kind of like, to me, she's almost like the little boy. What do you call the little boy that cried, that cried wolf? Because this motherfucker tells so many goddamn lies till you really don't know when this motherfucker is telling the truth or not. However, I did have some questions. Okay, now, my thing is this. She said he came there to drop off some music. 
Um, what the fuck you coming there to drop music off the phage of fuck? She got ties to the to the music industry or some shit? Like I, I could see if you if she works for a record company or some shit like that and you coming to drop your music off. You know how they come and like drop their demos off and shit, you know, trying to get their shit played um on the radio or whatever. But bitch, I can Phaedra do that for you? So what the fuck would you be dropping your bomb ass music off to Phaedra for? And who the fuck says that? Who says I'm coming to drop some bomb ass music off? Like, who says that? And another thing, they claim that he went to the wrong um the wrong law firm law firm. You don't know where the fuck Phaedra work at and y'all have supposedly been good friends or uh had a business relationship for over the last 20 years, you don't know where this motherfucker work at. Anytime you walk up to a goddamn law firm, them bitches have the name of the law firm on the window, on the door, on the desk. It's cards and shit up there with the name of the goddamn law firm. When you went in that motherfucker and you didn't ask for Phaedra when you went there, you didn't say, ah, hey, I'm here to see Phaedra Parks. You didn't say that shit. You just walked up to the desk and said, I'm here to drop off some bomb ass music. And in their mind, they said, this motherfucker got a bomb. Like, that shit don't make no sense to me. It don't make no sense to me. So, yeah. Um, and then she said she she didn't say that they were all white people. But by her kept emphasizing the fact that they didn't look like her will lead me to believe that he walked into, like, a, a, a law firm that's, predom that's predominantly white. So, when you walked your ass up in there, didn't nothing in your mind say, you know, I might be in the wrong place. They're trying to say that he was um, disheveled or he wasn't in his right mind or whatever. But that's all the more reason why I, I'm just not believing this shit that um that Phaedra trying to sell me. I mean, I'm just not. <laughs> Especially as we go on, she's taking all these motherfucking precautions and shit, getting all this damn security. Now, bitch, you done had your supposed to, I don't know if it's your own law firm. I don't know really I really don't know what the fuck it is that you got, but you done been doing this shit for quite some time now. Now, after all these years, you just now deciding to get some damn security. You just not deciding to get some security. Now you got fucking bodyguards and undercovers and all this type of shit going on. No, bitch. You doing all that shit for a reason. All the more reason why I believe that motherfucker came there to blow your ass up. <laughs> but yeah, child. So anyway, honey. Um, Let me see. Um, um, Okay, yeah. I think that's all I wanted to touch on with that. Oh, yeah. And then... She said that uh, she spoke to Homeland Security and she spoke to the FBI. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's protocol for a bitch that, that had a bomb scare. I mean, I don't know, but I, I just thought that that was just doing a little too much. I was like, you talked to Homeland Security. Okay. <laughs> child, I guess, honey, but you claimed that it was just a misunderstanding. That's a big ass misunderstanding, child. So anyway, honey, now we got um Kenya and Cynthia. Cynthia came over to Kenya's house or whatever. I guess to just chop it up or whatever. And um Kenya breaks out that um hard ass looking cake that she made for Matt for his birthday that he never came, you know, to partake in with her because according to her, he was still in California, supposedly at his sister house. <laughs> Is that what you say, girl? So anyway, <laughs> so they talking about that or whatever. And um, so Cynthia was saying how she, she felt some sort of way about Peter going on to the Wendy Williams show, which I did see that. Um, I saw that little segment or whatever. And from the way that he explained it, he said that he wanted to come on Wendy's show because Wendy was doing what Wendy does often, and that's giving misinformation, you know. And he pretty much wanted to come on there to clear his name. Now, in the midst of him coming in there to clear his name, of course, he also spilled a little bit of tea, you know. Um, he basically said that he was blindsided by um, this divorce. He said that he knew and that they agreed and that they had talked about separation, but it was a surprise to him to hear that she had went and filed for divorce. And he said that he found out when basically every motherfucker body else found out. So, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what the nigga said, okay? So, Cynthia is feeling some type of way about him going on the show, saying that or whatever. So, they just, um, you know, they just explaining that. I mean, they going through, you know, talking their shit, you know, shooting the shit. You know how we females do whatever, whatever. So, anyway, um, Matt, I mean, uh, Kenya, now she want to talk about her childish-ass relationship with Matt. 
you know, and um, then she starts with these fake ass tears or whatever. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get all into that shit a little bit later, honey, because that that shit there, I was like, what in the fuck am I looking at right now? But yeah, I'm gonna hold off on that for a little minute. So now you got Todd and Candy they at the restaurant. Todd say that he done, he has taken over as far as um the contractor. Now I don't know if he's saying. I mean, I don't really know what a contractor does. I think that they oversee everything, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. But he says that the contractor wasn't doing what the fuck he is that he was supposed to do. Now, is it that the contractor wasn't doing what he was supposed to do? Or was that y'all wasn't paying the motherfucking contractor the way that y'all was supposed to be paying him? And that's why he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. And he basically dipped on y'all ass. Okay, which, you know. But we're going to go along with this right here as, you know, as as they want us to. So anyway, um, Candy, she's getting with the chef because she wants to have a food tasting. She wants to invite all of the ladies um, to have them to taste the food because you know how them, them old cackling bitches is. Every time somebody got some shit going on, they all want to swarm on it to see what it is and how they can pick it apart, basically. Which, to me, that's like crazy as hell because they all got some flaw shit going on. Some goddamn where, and the two main motherfuckers that don't need to be saying shit by nobody, which is that goddamn Kenya and that motherfucking Sheree, them two be the main damn ones that be having so much shit to say about what another bitch got going on. But whatever, child. So now, honey, you got motherfucking um uh Portia over here talking about she house shopping. Now, Portia. You drive a motherfucking Bentley and you mean tell me ho you paying rent? <laughs> that is the craziest shit I have ever heard before in my life. But I'm not really surprised because once again, you know, and this ain't no offense to the to you to your AT aliens, but I haven't heard that that's the type of shit that y'all motherfuckers do. <laughs> I've heard that I've been hearing that shit for years. You know, I heard you have nice ass houses, but your house ain't got no furniture. Or in Portia's case, Bitch, you drive a motherfucking Bentley, bitch, and you paying rent? If that ain't the dumbest shit I ever heard of before in my life, oh, while you was right here laying up fucking for car keys, bitch, you should have been, if you're going to be fucking for something, bitch, fuck for, a, fuck for a house. You know what I'm saying? Fuck for a house. You know, you can, you could have still had you a nice car, bitch. You ain't necessarily have to have no goddamn Bentley. But that shit is crazy to me. Bitch, you drive a Bentley and you paying rent, bitch. Priorities, child. Priorities. Mm -mm. <laughs> that shit crazy. So anyway, she says she's house shopping. Okay. And this is going to be, you know, an important purchase for her or whatever. Um, And she wants to purchase a bigger home. Now you want to that bullshit because she wants to have a family. So the mama was like, well, bitch, do we have a man? Why are you right here talking about having a family? So then she goes on to this shit about Todd and you know, how he's back in her life and as she and the family didn't really know anything about him because she was supposedly dating somebody else while she was dating him. And you wonder why a bitch don't take you serious. But anyway, Jai, and uh, supposedly when she married Cordell, he sent her a, a Instagram or a text or an inbox or something and saying that she married the wrong Stuart because we found out that his last name is Stuart too, which in me, in my opinion... Um, that probably would have been a real a deal breaker for me because, bitch, I don't want no reminder of where the fuck I was three, four years ago. Okay, so, I mean, I know that that's fucked up to say or whatever, but, bitch, that's just me. Okay, I mean, I probably, I would probably be missing out on my blessing because of my fuck shit, but I'll just have to deal with that, you know. So, anyway, um, that was that. So, we're going to see how that shit unfolds. I told y'all that Portia is silly. She's silly. And did that bitch say... Uh, some about the 45 days, right? And that motherfucker said, 45 days? Yeah, what is that, like, uh, a few weeks? Like, three weeks? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. Um, now we go over here to fucking messy ass goddamn Mama Joyce. She goes to go see the, to go see the motherfucking Bravo in-house lawyer. Because y'all know he be on every every Bravo show when it comes to a divorce or a, a marriage or whatever. He's the goddamn go-to. So, apparently, uh, Bravo done contracted his ass, okay? Because <laughs> I know he making all these goddamn appearance, appearances just on, you know, GP, all right? So, anyway... She take her motherfucking messy ass up in there asking him all these damn questions about 
um if your husband goes to jail hypothetically speaking if your husband goes to jail do you have to stay married to him and what's the time frame that you had to get a divorce bitch why the fuck do you care why do you care? And then in your confessional, you talking about, you know, Phaedra is coming for your daughter. So you coming for her. How is Phaedra coming for Candy at this point? Because I really don't, I don't see Phaedra really giving two fucks about what the fuck Candy got going on right now. So maybe, I mean, if we missing some shit, bitch, fill me in. But from what I'm seeing, you just been on messy ass bitches. Somebody need to cuss your ass the fuck out. Bitch, you be doing too much. And why the fuck is you all on this goddamn show like this? We done seen you too damn much this season. And, and, and we, we just in the damn beginning. Because you know they get fucking housewives 20 goddamn episodes, okay? So, I mean, it's just the goddamn beginning. So, hopefully, your ass will fade to the back, you know, within the next couple episodes. Because you be working on my goddamn nerves. Now, I know some people like Mama Joyce. You know, and when Mama Joyce first appeared on the show, I liked Mama Joyce as well. But I think that Mama Joyce now is doing too much for the camera. I think she's doing too much for the camera. And I understand that Candy is pretty much trying to put everybody on so they can get their own damn check and stay out her motherfucking pockets. I understand that. However, you know, it's really hard for people to um, not pass judgment on your mom. When she's always in a bitch business and doing some fuck shit, okay? Now, people try and have respect for your mom out of respect for you. But at some point, a bitch just got to be like, fuck it. And, bitch, what's happening? You know? I mean, because she be doing too goddamn much. But, yeah. So, that that was that. I guess we'll, we'll see how that shit work out later. So, then, um, you got Kenya. She's still trying to call Matt. Matt basically ignoring her ass. And his uh, voicemail is full. I guess she done... <laughs> I guess she done filled up the man fucking voicemail with her fucking crying and pleading and texting and all that bullshit. But anyway, like I said, who the fuck cares? Um, now we get down here to the food tasting. So Bertha and that other aunt, Nora, they, um, oh, and I guess the mama came with them too, I guess. I don't know. Um, uh, why the fuck is Bertha always got a fucking scowl on her damn face? You know, like, bitch, if you don't want to motherfucking be here, bitch, and if you don't want to goddamn participate, stay your motherfucking ass home. I mean, every fucking time a bitch see you, you got this old cauliflower ass wig on your damn head, and you just looking like, oh my God, like, bitch, you you make me get pissed off. Like, <laughs> it's, it's just so uncalled for. You got a fucking attitude about every goddamn thing. You don't want to fucking do nothing. You don't want to fucking participate in nothing, but then you be the first motherfucker to ask about a chick. Get the fuck out of here, Aunt Bertha. Fuck. I mean, you know, and I can relate. I can relate because, you know, I got, I got aunts and shit too. Okay, so, I mean, okay. <laughs> I ain't going to get all into that because they might see this video one day. <laughs> but yeah, child, if you don't, don't want to be there, Aunt Nora, honey, get the fuck out of here. Now, in this case, I really don't even know why Aunt Bertha and Aunt Nora were there, okay? Because they could have just, bitch, they could have had Mama Joyce to bring the damn cake because they wasn't even interacting with the rest of the, with, with the, rest of the women when they got there. They had them sitting back there in the back. I don't know what the fuck they was even there for. So, I mean, maybe that's why Bertha had a motherfucking attitude. I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm okay, Bertha. I'm, I'm, I, forget everything I just said for this scenario. Because maybe you had a reason to be pissed off. I mean, because I really don't see the purpose of you being there. Unless they just cut some shit out. I mean, but if they cut something out, they should have cut all of it out. Because you really didn't have a purpose for being there. Nor are you either. Really, to be honest with you, Mama Joyce, your motherfucking ass ain't had no business being there either. It was a damn tasting, a food tasting for the girls, not your ass. But, of course, we know we, you had to be there because you had fucking messy scene going on. So, I guess that's why they had your ass there. Whatever, child. So, um, let me see. So, everybody starts to show up. Um, Sheree come in off the gate being motherfucking messy. You know, telling um, Mama Joyce what Kenya said about her wig or whatever. And, um... I don't think Kenya was necessarily saying that Mama Joyce's wig is tired. I believe what she was saying is, your wig was tired, and it was a tired-ass rendition of the wig that Mama Joyce wears. I believe that that's what she was saying. But anyway, you know, 
Mama Joyce, you know, she was like, oh, you don't want to come for me, can you bitch? Sit your old ass down some goddamn well. See, the thing is, you ain't ran across a bitch that don't give a fuck yet, okay? You ain't ran across the bitch that, that, that don't mind getting your motherfucking ass together, okay? I, 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 don't think, I don't think that you will have that same approach with a bitch like Marlo. I believe that Marlo will get your ass all the way together without even cursing you not one time, you know? That you need a bitch like Marlo. To get your ass together. Cause bitch you, you be doing too much. And um, you do too much because. Ain't nobody put you in your place. That's all that is. So anyway child. Um, then Cynthia come in. Now Cynthia you know. I, I, I said before I was digging your wig. But bitch I'm tired of you wearing that wig. Every time you got to come around a bitch food. Okay. Now they make a bitch in the restaurant. Put a motherfucking hairnet on for a reason. Okay, now when you wearing some shit like that, that ain't no, that's not no goddamn everyday wig. Okay, out of all the times when you put these motherfucking ponytails in and have your braids in and all that there, then you want to come out around a bitch food, you got fucking hair flying every goddamn well. Don't nobody, and you can't tell me that that shit ain't shedding. Okay, you can't tell me, you can't, you can't tell me it ain't. I don't give a fuck how much a human hair is supposed to be or whatever. Human hair sheds just like motherfucking synthetic hair do. Okay, and I, I don't think that shit's sanitary. And you always put that shit on when you're going around the bitch food. That goddamn hair needs its own goddamn chair and place at the table. Okay, so anyway, um, Mama Joy, she jumped right in on Phaedra. As soon as Phaedra get there, she done pull, she done pull Phaedra to the side. What the fuck is you pulling a phaedra to the goddamn side for? Like, bitch, you couldn't, you just could not wait. You know, and I, I really wish that, I, I don't know. I, I Maybe phaedra mama need to get you, get you together some shit. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I see, listen, I'm like this. Even though I'm an adult, even though I'm an adult, and I can handle myself with no problems, okay? If somebody's mammy is coming for me, okay? Bitch, that's when my mama is finna step step on the scene. And bitch, I don't think nobody don't too many people want it with that motherfucker, okay? So my my thing is, I believe that if Phaedra wants to keep this respect that she has for Mama Joyce or whatever, um, I get my mama on her ass. I get my mama on her ass. Cause bitch, you coming for my child, bitch, it's time for you to meet me. You know, and I feel that same way. If if a bitch mammy fucking with my daughter, and my daughter's 23 years old, if somebody motherfucking mama come for that one, oh, bitch, I'm coming out. Okay, you can believe that. Okay, but yeah, I mean, like I said, bitch, that mama just do that shit because ain't nobody checked her ass. Ain't nobody checked that ass yet. But yeah, so what, what I can say that I was happy about, um, Candy, finally, okay, was not here for the bullshit, all right? She went over there and was like, Mama, Brit, get your motherfucking ass over here and sit down some goddamn well, okay? Because this shit, it was, it was uncalled for. It was fucking uncalled for. And, and by Candy doing that this time, that lets me know, bitch, you could, this is the shit that you should have been doing all before. Because your mama done been out of order a couple of motherfucking times. And the same way that you shut that shit down tonight, that's what the fuck it is that you should have been damn doing. Okay, so, you know, all of that shit about, you know, uh, you know, you know, you trying to justify the shit that your mama say and all that. That's bullshit. You know, that's bullshit. But in this instance, I am glad that you shut the shit down because once again, she was out of order. Okay, she was. She was out of order. So, um, Mama Joy. Oh, so then they all get that get to the table now, whatever. So I forgot who brought the shit up about, um. About the bomb shit. I don't know if it was Kenya. I can't remember who it was. But anyway, um, that shit came up. Phaedra Kong with her bullshit or whatever. And then she goes to all of a sudden talking about Black Lives Matter. And I was like, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? Like, I, I don't know. It seems to me like now Phaedra's trying to turn this shit into some racial shit. When I don't think that it was anything racial. That man looked like a goddamn crackhead. If he looked anything like he did... When they showed him from when he was talking to your ass on the last season or whatever, I could see why those people were scared. You know, and then if he looked like that, and then they were saying that he was um that he was um not in his right mind, then I don't in this case, I don't see that shit being no damn racial fucking profiling. You know what I'm saying? I, I just I don't see that. So Phaedra, you can miss me with that bullshit. And I was a hundred percent here 
for with Candy when she was like, bitch, please, okay? Your motherfucking ass is walking around this bitch scared. Bitch, you got bodyguards, motherfucking security, and all type of shit. So don't be coming up in here trying to make it seem like shit is all good when, bitch, you know you motherfucking scared. And I agree. Because, yeah, bitch, you are scared. That's why all of a sudden you beefing up security at your fucking office and getting all this fucking nation nation of islam shit going on you know what i'm saying a bitch that ain't a bitch that ain't got nobody after them don't even think do no shit like that so bitch you done did something and you know a bitch after your ass for for something for some reason or another okay so yeah i'm with you candy child miss me with that bullshit too honey so um anyway so then you got fucking uh what that bitch name is um uh 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 uh, uh sheree she goes to bringing up the shit to Candy about Block. Why the fuck would you bring that shit up around these old messy ass motherfuckers? How would you like it if a bitch brought up your drunk ass motherfucking son or high ass son or whatever the fuck it is that he was this goddamn DUI not too goddamn long ago? Would you want somebody to bring that shit up in front of everybody? You don't want nobody asking you about old cockeyed ass Bob when this bitch was bringing hoes to your house, fucking them in your goddamn house, and when that motherfucker whooped your ass in the courtroom when you had your homegirl Frazier representing you and he bought his ass up in there and whooped both of y'all asses in the courtroom and that motherfucker licked his tongue at your ass and stuck a bird at your ass up the hallway. <laughs> you don't want a bitch bringing that type of shit up. You don't want a bitch bringing, about, bringing up how long it took your ass a half a goddamn decade to build one goddamn house when this motherfucker's around here that build whole motherfucking communities within 30 to goddamn 45 days. You don't want a bitch bringing up your tea but you gonna bring your mop head ass over here bringing up this bullshit in front of these damn people like this, Sheree, what the fuck is wrong with you? Ooh, girl. Mm-mm, honey, you be doing too goddamn much. You be doing too damn much. So, anyway, they both kind of, like, played it cool or whatever because then she went to bringing up, she brought the shit up. Because the motherfuckers ain't even know that Portia and Block had whatever it is that they had. Portia said that they dated, but they never slept together. I don't know if they did. I don't really don't give a fuck, okay? But that just was the wrong place to bring that shit up because... It was motherfuckers at that table that didn't know nothing about that shit. And then if I was Portia, I'd be looking like, okay, well, damn, was Candy and fucking Sheree sitting around having a fucking conversation about me? Like, what the fuck's that all about? Because the only way that Sheree would have known that shit is if Candy brought the shit, you know what I'm saying? Candy brought the shit up. So it's like, bitch, you just being all around fucking messy. But I'm glad that they shut your ass down. They didn't feed into your bullshit, whatever the fuck it is that you was trying to get pumped up. They didn't, um, you know, they, they went on here. They played that shit cool or whatever. Now, for whatever reason, Mama Joyce was my tea damn quiet over there at the end of the damn table when all of that conversation was going on. You had so much shit to say when you was talking about Phaedra and talking about how, oh, yeah, he said that over there on my phone. that he said he got tired of you um, messing or uh, uh, effing him around or playing him or whatever the fuck. And he was coming to blow you the fuck up like... Okay, I understand that you was getting off by continuing to say that. But once again, you ain't came across the right bitch that done put your old ass in your motherfucking place, honey. Because you be doing too goddamn much. You be doing too fucking much. So anyway, that was the end of that. Um, then you got Cynthia. She went to go and talk to her attorney. Same old shit. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, bitch. This right here could have had its whole goddamn, its own episode for me. Okay. Kenya motherfucking Moore and goddamn Matt, whatever the fuck your last name is. Bitch, Kenya, you irritated the fuck out of me tonight, okay? Reason being is, how the fuck you got this man kicking in your shit, okay? He done punch walls, he done broke your glasses, ain't no telling what the fuck else it is that he done did. But you being petty, gonna take the man. Hold on, y'all. So you gonna be petty and take the man garage door opener so that he can't get into the house that night because you say you didn't want to talk to him or whatever. After you done call this man every goddamn day, all motherfucking day, you want to talk, you want to do this. Now he comes there, okay? You say he was drunk. I don't know how you know he was drunk if you didn't talk to him or whatever the case may be. But he done kicked your shit in, okay? He done kicked the motherfucking hole in your goddamn garage door or whatever. But then, you over here crying to the goddamn producer 
talking about how much you is in love with him and you know um how he feels like he doesn't deserve to be with you and you know and he's just acting out and da 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 how the fuck is you this this vested in this nigga after only being with him for one season which i'm i'm thinking that's maybe like one year if that you know how the fuck you that vested in him to where you got this motherfucker is clearly crazy okay but you sitting here repeatedly taking him back but be too scared of Portia Portia she only pulled your motherfucking hair and I don't give a fuck what nobody say you deserve that shit okay you deserve that that's all the fuck Portia did to you you had this bitch getting uh, arrested this motherfucker was all down to the goddamn jail taking mug shots and shit behind your ass but you not one time call the fucking police on this nigga. You not one time filed a report on this nigga. You keep taking this nigga back, taking this nigga back, taking this nigga back. But you so goddamn scared of Portia so you don't even want this bitch at your fucking housewarming party. I mean, now don't get me wrong. You entitled to have whoever the fuck it is that you want to have at your house. But don't be trying to make it seem like you so goddamn scared of Portia. Like you, she's so goddamn unpredictable. So you don't know when this bitch going to pop off and like she's going to attack you. She attacked you that one goddamn time because you was fucking with her. If you ain't fucking with her, she ain't fucking with you. But you got this old, this old cross-eyed ass motherfucker over here fucking up your shit. Okay? But you want to sit here and just cry and, oh, he's just acting out. What the fuck is acting out? What is that? What, how the fuck do a damn 28, 29, 30-year-old motherfucker act out? What is that? Okay? So, anyway, you finally, get this, you finally get this motherfucker on the phone. I don't know if he called you or you called him. I don't fucking know. So, he goes into, you know, before we end this completely, you know, can you find it somewhere in your heart? You know the regular old abuse, abuse uh, speech. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, the ass kicker speech when he's trying to get back in good, okay? You know, uh, can you just find it in your heart to forgive me, you know, if I agreed to change? Okay, now when, when I'm going to keep going back to Portia. When Portia, when it was known that Portia was going to um, anger management, you gave zero fucks about her going to to anger management, okay? Uh, I, I, I didn't hear anything about that or whatever, whatever. Okay, but this nigga's over here fucking vandalizing all your shit probably done slung your dogs around and all type of shit who the fuck knows what this nigga done been doing over there cause the little bit of shit that we do know about is just the little bit of shit that we know about okay cause I'm quite sure it's the most shit that we don't fucking know about okay but now all of a sudden he's talking to you about changing but once again you still up here fucking with Portia you know come on now so anyway um let me see. Uh, what 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 the fuck was I? What the fuck was I at, child? Um. Oh yeah. So anyway, he wants forgiveness, and I say to that, fuck you, Matt. Okay, <laughs> fuck you. Okay, because bitch, you have a problem. You have a problem when you when you started talking to Kenya about you know the little shit that y'all got going on. You talking about what the fuck you say? Uh, I'm I'm young. Uh, I get up, I might get upset and I might break something. Bitch, break your mammy shit, bitch. Don't come over here breaking up my motherfucking shit, okay? My motherfucking shit that I would... See, let me tell you about a nigga that ain't got shit to lose. A nigga that ain't got shit to lose don't give a fuck about fucking up your shit, okay? They don't care nothing about fucking up your shit because they ain't got shit to lose, okay? You, on the other hand, this is some shit that you worked hard for. You worked hard to build. I'm pretty. I'm more than sure this nigga didn't contribute not a goddamn, not a damn piece of nothing to you building this house or getting this house renovated or whatever the fuck it is that you did to the damn house. That nigga didn't contribute to none of that shit. Cause see, when you invest in some shit, you ain't gonna fuck up no shit that you didn't invest it in, okay? But see, you bring, you go right here and you get these old nobody ass niggas, okay? And for some reason, you wanna be, you wanna be Madam Save 'em, okay? And show them a better life. And, you know, I, I'm doing you a favor by stepping down to come down here and mingle with the peasants. Because, bitch, that's what the fuck you're doing. And I'm sure that that's the attitude that you have with that man. Because he kept saying, you say some crazy ass shit to me. You talk to me like I'm a motherfucking animal or a motherfucking child. And I done told your ass to stop doing that shit. Now, my thing is this. Matt, if you don't like the way that this bitch talk to you, stop fucking with her. Kenya, if you don't like this nigga over here fucking up your shit, stop fucking with him. What the fuck is this conversation shit that y'all keep having? 
The more fucking conversation that you keep wanting to have with this motherfucker because we use on the phone. Oh, I don't think that this is something that we should be talking about over the phone. You know, can you come see me? No, bitch, fuck you. I don't want to motherfucking see you, bitch. I don't want to see you. We ain't got any motherfucking thing to talk about. We ain't got shit to talk about. Matter of fact, you ain't even got to come over here to get your shit. None of that. Okay? I don't, none of that. It, it, will be, it will be removed from the premises, but you ain't going to motherfucking come and get it. The motherfucking trash dump people, the fucking, uh, which kind of the, the bulk trash people be coming to get this shit. Okay? But no, me and you, we ain't got a motherfucking thing to talk about. The fuck I want to talk to you for? Bitch, you done came right here and done kick my motherfucking door in and shit. The fuck? Fuck out of here. So anyway, so they get on the phone. She tells him that the production crew or the cameras or whatever, they getting ready to wrap up. Alright? So she insinuates that ain't nobody going to be there when he comes when he comes there or whatever. So he gets there. Come to find out the motherfucking camera crew bitch ain't going to know goddamn well. And he's pissed. Now, this him being pissed could be one for one or two reasons. Okay? Number one, it could be because like he said, I'm not here for this shit. Like, bitch, this is your show. I don't, I'm, I'm not here for this camera shit. Especially when we talking, talking about some shit that's going on or whatever in our personal lives or whatever. It's bad enough. You got me looking crazy out here. Well, no, bitch, she ain't got you looking crazy. You got your motherfucking self looking crazy because of the shit that you're doing. But she got you looking extra crazy because she's on motherfucking TV and she's letting the world know what the fuck it is that you're doing. Where you think you be doing the shit behind the scenes. Although, we did catch on camera your motherfucking ass kicking that goddamn, kicking that goddamn garage door okay so anyway that could be reason number one or reason number two bitch you don't want to be caught on camera while you doing that fuck shit that you be doing okay so it's either one it's one or two i believe it's a little mixture of both probably i'm leaning more towards the latter you know what i'm saying you want to come over here and fuck some shit up you know shake king you razzle her hair a little bit you know freeze it up or whatever and you don't want that shit to be caught on camera because you know that's what abusers do and i don't give a fuck what nobody say that nigga is an abuser and if he ain't already done him camera king your ass up it's on the motherfucking way just to show she take this nigga back again after he done did this bullshit it ain't gonna be long before he be slapping the shit out of her ass ain't gonna be long Ain't gonna be long. I'm almost willing to put motherfucking money on it that he don't hemmed her ass up. I bet you that. If that nigga ain't pushed her ass down or some shit like that, he done had that motherfucker, you know, cowering or what what they call it, towering, cowering. I don't know because I don't do it. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He done had that motherfucker in fear, you know, because Cynthia asked her was she scared of him. And she says, you know, I don't think that he would ever do anything to hurt me, bitch. Why? Why? Why you think that? Why you think that? So you think that uh, he just going to continue to just punch walls and kick shit after a while? That ain't going to be good enough. Because he's punching them walls and kicking them motherfucking doors and shit because he's imagining that that's your ass. <laughs> okay? That's what the fuck that is. Okay? While you're around here bullshitting. But anyway, child, so anyway, um, he comes over there and, you know, when she's talking about, um, you know, um, what did be said? Uh, so what are we doing? It's either you're going to be here or you're not. Now, see, when you go to, when you go to saying shit like that, you ain't done. Just for the simple fact that you agreed to see this motherfucker lets me know that you ain't done. And see, excuse me, and see, shit like that is hard for me. To be like, you know, it's hard for me to be on your side, per se. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just can't, <laughs> you know. So, anyway, child, um, like I said, she's standing out there. She want to argue or whatever. And at this point, he's like, fuck this shit. I'm out of here. Now, if she call this nigga again after this, okay. Because, bitch, cause, cause, first of all, the nigga said when he went to, when he went to California, he was done. Okay, but apparently she over here texting him all these, you know, I love yous and I miss yous and, you know, we can work it out and we can do this and we can do that. So, you know, he, he said that that's the only reason that he came back. Now, Matt, um, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't believe for one motherfucking second that your ass was in California with no goddamn sister. Okay, but um, whatever. <laughs> Um, you know, and that was pretty much the end of that. All right. So we're going to see where this shit go. 
Um, they really working on my goddamn nerves. Um, Kenya is really working on my motherfucking nerves. Mama Joyce working on my nerves too. And Sheree, bitch, your ass is over there leaning towards that as well. So, um, that's all I got for y'all. Like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, all that good shit. Um, I'm finna go in here and watch, um, Love and Hip Hop. Hopefully I get the video up tonight. Because I still got to do, um, Merit to Medicine's video as well. And I'm kind of glad that they're moving Merit, Merit to Medicine to, um, Friday. Because, um, that'll kind of give me something to do, um, as far as a video for you guys on Saturdays. Alright, so, um, until Love and Hip Hop, y'all. Peace out.